Welcome to the webinar, Starting a Hemp or Cannabis Lab. Do you know your ROI or return on investment? As the cannabis and hemp industry expand worldwide, the need for quality control becomes even more essential to ensure continued growth. Just as food and drugs are monitored to ensure accurate labeling and that they are free of contaminants, the same concept holds true for cannabis and hemp. This testing requires a suite of analytical instruments. The webinar will provide information on the required instrumentation, approximate cost of the instrumentation, revenue per analysis, samples analyzed per week on an eight-hour day, even break-even times for the instrument purchase, and monthly expenses for major consumables. The cost per analysis will vary based on location and should be verified. Information presented here is based on research in the U.S. market. This webinar does not provide details on building costs, rent, taxes, utilities, benches, ventilation systems, personnel, etc., as there are too many variables. In addition, the expenses listed only include the more expensive items and generally does not include items such as vials, caps, and certain other consumables. Also, it has been estimated that other lab supplies such as pipettes, gloves, Vortex, spatula, Kim wipes, dispenser for solvents, flammable solvent cabinet, etc., will require an additional $30,000 in expenses. The areas of testing include cannabinoid and terpene profiles in blue, as well as contaminant testing shown in red for pesticides, residual solvents, heavy metals, mycotoxins, and pathogens. Also of importance are moisture and water activity. Cannabinoids are generally measured by instrumentation such as HPLC, UHPLC, LCMS, and LCMSMS. The information provided here is based on using Shimatsu's HPLC Cannabis Analyzer or Hemp Analyzer. For a more comprehensive review of other instrumentation, see the article, How to Choose the Right Instrument for Cannabinoid and Terpene Analysis, with the reference in the bottom left-hand corner of the slide. UHPLC analysis time can be twice as fast as those using conventional HPLC, making it more efficient method though it's not as rugged as HPLC. The table on the left provides data when conducting a 10-minute analysis of 11 cannabinoids using HPLC. Increasing the number of cannabinoids to 15 cannabinoids will add five minutes to the analysis time. For an 11 cannabinoid analysis, the revenue is typically in the $50 to $75 range, but the table uses the lower $50 value as it is more prevalent according to research. With a runtime of 10 minutes resulting in 48 samples per day, the revenue would be $12,000 per week, meaning the instrument would be paid off in less than a month. The table on the right provides monthly costs for the more expensive consumables, which run less than $2,000 per month. Consumers are very interested in terpene profiles because of the different aromas and possible medicinal benefits. The combination of terpenes and cannabinoids contribute to the entourage effect because of the synergy between the two classes of compounds. Headspace gas chromatography mass spectrometry or HS GCMS is one method for performing terpene analysis. With this method the terpenes are separated from most of the 500 compounds in cannabis during the headspace step and before the chromatography. The result is cleaner spectrum because fewer compounds are being analyzed, which in turn leads to a longer column life. The table presents the analysis time of 12 minutes. The time could be increased based on the number of terpenes being analyzed. It has been reported there are over 5,000 terpenes in nature and 200 in cannabis, although most profiles analyzed contain less than 20. Revenue is typically in the range of $120 per sample. At 200 samples per week, 
the revenue will be $24,000 per week. The break-even point for the instrument is typically less than one month. The most prominent consumable is helium at $500 per month. Adding vials and caps increases expenses another $1,100 for a total of $1,600 per month. As mentioned earlier, because the sample is very clean, the column would only need to be replaced yearly. Food labels often contain nutrient information such as sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, which can be analyzed by an inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometer, or ICPMS. The ICPMS is also used to analyze toxic heavy metals, including the big four of arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury, an analysis required by most states. In addition, various states require analysis of other elements, such as silver, barium, chromium, copper, iron, manganese, nickel, antimony, selenium, and zinc. With ICPMS, the analysis time is the same whether analyzing one or multiple elements since the technology can be performed simultaneously. Expected revenue per sample is 75 hours for the big four. Analysis time is listed as five minutes, but there are accessories that can decrease the time to approximately two minutes. The long time was chosen because metal analysis is the fastest analysis in cannabis and hemp labs and thus does not act as a bottleneck to obtain a full certificate of analysis for all compound classes. Up to 480 samples can be analyzed per week for a revenue of $36,000. ROI for the ICPMS is less than one month. The table on the right shows some of the more expensive consumable items such as argon, a torch, and the cone assembly. The average cost of analysis is approximately $1 per sample for all consumables. Due to time limitations, contact me for a full list of required consumables or visit www.growyourlab.com. Since cannabis is illegal in the U.S. on the federal level, the list of pesticides and their concentrations to be analyzed vary by states. For example, my Oregon and California both include a high number of pesticides on the list. The number varies with 59 pesticides on Oregon's list and 66 on California's list. The maximum residual limit, or MRL, values also vary within each state. Many other states follow the Oregon or California pesticide requirements, though most have made modification. Canada has a different approach requiring 96 pesticides to be analyzed, and in many cases at a much lower level. As for hemp, though it's federally legal in the U.S., there is no specific pesticide list. By EPA regulations, if a pesticide is not listed for a commodity, the default tolerance is set at 10 ppb as with any other agricultural product. Pesticides are generally analyzed by LCMS-MS using electrospray ionization, or ESI. However, Atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, or APCI, may require depending on the regulations being followed. In some cases, APCI has replaced traditional GCMS-MS methods. Since GCMS-MS may be more sensitive for a few select compounds, consult your manufacturer about specific requirements. Pesticide analysis is generally in the 150 to 225 hour range per sample. Mycotoxin, ultratoxin A, and aflatoxins B1, B2, G1, G2 are required for cannabis analysis by many states. Typically, mycotoxin and aflatoxin revenue is approximately $75 per sample. Fortunately, pesticides and mycotoxins can be analyzed in the same run using LCMS-MS. The expected revenue for both compound classes will be in the 225 to 300 hour range. In the example shown below in the table, the lower value of 225 was selected. Up to 200 samples per week can be analyzed, resulting in revenue of $45,000 per week. 
At this rate, the break-even point for the most expensive instrument used in QC cannabis testing is approximately nine weeks. For information using a multiple instrument setup, see the article Increasing Return on Investment for Pesticide Analysis in Cannabis. The table on the right shows the example of monthly expenses for operating an LCMS-MS for cannabis analysis. Consumables include nitrogen gas, solvents, extraction chemicals, guard columns, analytical columns. Most expenses will be under $5,000 per month. Solvents are used to extract the cannabinoids and terpenes, and what remains on the products are referred to as residual solvents. Residual solvents are analyzed using headspace gas chromatography mass spectrometry, the same instrument and other sampler used for the analysis of terpenes. Thus, only one instrument may be needed for both these analyses, depending on the number of samples being analyzed. The table on the left shows data based on the analysis time of 14 minutes for analyzing California's 20 Category 1 and 2 compounds. Expected revenue is $100 per sample, at a rate of 171 samples per week. The weekly revenue would be $17,100, and break even would be about one and a half months. Expenses are like those described earlier under terpenes. All analytical measurements described earlier require an analytical balance also sold by Shimatsu. Another type of balance is a moisture balance shown here. Moisture balances can help improve the accuracy of analytical methods since results are determined on a dry weight basis. Also, if the moisture content is above 12%, the product is prone to mold growth. Shown in table, is the ROI based on the revenue of $20 per sample and an analysis time of 10 minutes. Measuring 240 samples per week results in a weekly revenue of $4,800, meaning the balance is paid off in less than a half a week. Some states also require water activity meters, especially for storage of product to prevent mold growth. Shimatsu recommends the new tech group water activity meters. Most states require measurement of six pathogens, including pathogenic E. coli, salmonella, and four species of aspergillus. Shimatsu recommends the microarray technology from Pathogen DX. Typically, revenue is $80 per sample. If analyzing 240 samples per week, the weekly revenue will be 19,200 with a break even point of 2.5 weeks as shown in the table. Expenses for pathogen analysis are shown in the table on the right. The consumables are more expensive than other technologies. The table also includes data for a lab technician working 2.5 hours per day at $30 per hour. So monthly revenue for four weeks would be $76,800 and expenses would be $31,308 for a net of $45,492. Visit www.growyourlab.com for a short video of a full working cannabis and hemp laboratory as well as other related videos, audio PowerPoint presentations, applications, articles, brochures, white papers, and more. This webinar provided some information on the analytical testing requirements and expenses associated with operating and managing a lab for QC testing of cannabis and or hemp. Topics include testing for the desirable cannabinoids and terpenes by HPLC, and Headspace GCMS respectively. Also included are contaminant testing for heavy metals by ICPMS, pesticides and mycotoxins by LCMS-MS, and residual solvents by Headspace GCMS, and pathogens by microarray technology. Finally, discussion on analytical balances, moisture balances, and water activity meters are included. Variable expenses 
related to geographical location are not included as the information would be too exhaustive to present here. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it.